Hi everyone, my name is Giselle and I'm a registered diagnostic medical sonographer, aka ultrasound technologist, and I scan everything except for the heart. The heart is technically echo or cardiovascular, so yeah, I'm actually a general sonographer and I scan everything but the heart. So some scans that I do are more specialized like pediatrics and transcranial Dopplers. So I know a little bit about this ultrasound machine and today I'm going to explain all of the different probes that I use for my ultrasound scans and some of their uses. It's important to have a basic knowledge of transducers because not one transducer is only meant for one thing and you'll learn that each transducer has its pros and cons and better uses for different exams. You might learn something you never knew so hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Also don't forget to check out my basic introduction to ultrasound machines where I talk about all of the buttons we use. So let's get started. This probe here is the transvaginal or endovaginal probe. And this probe is most commonly known for assessing the female organs such as the cervix, uterus, ovaries, and their surrounding structures. We typically can image things much nicer with this probe because it is very close to the organs and assists with patients who are gassy and unable to see clearly transabdominally or on the belly. The notch for this probe will be pointed upwards or supine for sagittal and to the patient's right for transverse. And not everything is in a true sagittal or transverse plane because everyone's organs are angled differently. It takes a lot of practice to understand how to use this probe and to orient yourself. So just be kind to yourself when you're trying to do these types of exams. There's also a special way to disinfect this probe. In our department, we use the Trophon unit to disinfect these probes. And it's pretty cool to use because I know there are some places that use the old school method where they dip it in the solution. But this machine actually disinfects it at a very high level. So yeah, that's the transvaginal probe and we use them a lot in the hospital setting. The next two probes I'm going to share with you are the Curve 6 and Curve 9 probes. The differences between the two are the size and frequency of the probes. The Curve 6 is the one I use for exams like abdomens, renals, and sometimes I'll even use it for venous studies of the legs or arterioles if the patient has large or swollen legs. You don't need to limit yourself to one type of probe. Each one has its strengths and weaknesses according to patient size, depth of the organ you're trying to take a picture of, or even patient age. If you click on the curve settings on the ultrasound machine, you can see here there's all different types of settings that you can use this probe for. You can use both of these probes to also scan transabdominal pelvics to see ovaries or even thyroids on larger necks. These probes are meant for deeper penetration. For an example, I'd use the curve 6 to check livers and gallbladders on an adult but if it's a young, skinny child, I would attempt on the Curve 6 to see what it looks like and then test out on the Curve 9 to see if it looks better. Another exam you wouldn't think to use the Curve Probe on is a scrotal exam. If they are really swollen, you can try the Curve to see if you can see the testicles more clearly. Always think outside of the box. I tend to find myself using the probe for a majority of my scans. Oh, and don't forget that you can use these probes for pregnancy exams. They are the ones that you will be using majority of OBs. And yeah, let me just show you again. To go into transverse, you're gonna have the notch to the patient right. And to go sagittal, you're gonna have the notch facing up towards patient head. And you're just gonna hold these probes as close to the bottom as you can because they are big clunky probes but yeah hopefully you guys know that this is the most common probe that you're going to use for a lot of your exams in the hospital and in outpatient settings the next probes we are going to talk about are the linear probes these are the ones we're going to be using for mostly superficial structures and for arteries and veins. 
these are most likely your vascular probes but like i said earlier you can also use the curved probes on vascular as well but what this is is the linear nine and we use it for the veins and the arteries and we are going to be showing that the way you hold it is important because you're going to be using the heel toe method to get your veins and your arteries in a good position of scanning if you go to the machine here you can see that you can use it on also abdomens we use it on pediatric abdomens especially for like babies because it has a frequency that is better used for pediatric abdomens you can also use it for arteries in the legs veins in the legs arteries and veins in the arms and the carotid arteries in your neck this is the probe that you will be using a majority of the times in a vascular setting you can use it for vein mappings and also thyroids again but what i would say for thyroids is using the musculoskeletal probe which is the bigger probe this one is the m L420 and that is used for mostly musculoskeletal superficial structures like testicles, thyroids, and anything musculoskeletal general like interceptions for babies, spines, and of course your ruling out appendicitis exams. These two probes are very important for superficial items. Now you can see that this probe is much longer than the probe linear nine. Once again, to use this probe like the other probes, the notch will be to the patient's right for transverse and the notch will point towards the patient head for sagittal images. You can click on the machine to see what other exams we use this probe for breast, thyroid, scrotal, musculoskeletal general or penetration, and baby hips are also very common that we use this probe for. So just remember that if you are confused on which probe to use, you can click on the probe setting on the machine and it will tell you the different types of exams that you can use this probe on. We have a bunch of probes that are in the probe case so you can see here that we have them sitting here if we're not currently using them. A probe that we use for vascular on pediatrics is this hockey stick probe. We call it the hockey stick probe because it looks like a little tiny hockey stick but essentially it's for superficial structures typically on like a baby because it has a very high frequency so we use it on arteries or veins and sometimes testicles on babies and it's really cute a little cute hockey probe and a lot of places don't have these that i have seen but if you have pediatrics that's more commonly what you're going to use it for but you can also use it for superficial structures like the cephalic vein in an arm it makes it look really nice and pretty so yeah just play around with the different probes that you have in your place of work to see what they're like the next random probe that we have in our little probe shelf thing is this tcd probe or transcranial doppler probe and what i've seen is that other places that don't use the tcd machine can use this probe to take a look at the vessels in the brain so we use this for that specialized doppler exam and it's really cool because it can see very 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 tiny vessels that are in your brain and we can doppler them and see if there's any vasospasms in the brain so this one's a really cool probe and last but not least is this other tiny little tiny curved looking probe and this actually is GE's newest type of baby head probe. I don't know if you guys have seen on the older GE machines it's usually a flat tiny probe 
but this one's a curved tiny probe and this one we use on baby heads or neonatal brains also called encephalograms and this little tiny footprint is perfect for the anterior fontanelle when you are scanning a baby brain so yeah it's this cute little tiny probe that not a lot of people have unless you're doing pediatrics and there you have it friends this is my random basic probe video if you guys have any more questions or if you'd like to know more about each probe or just want to see more things about ultrasound don't forget to subscribe to my channel comment down below if you have any questions or video requests and i hope you guys enjoyed this probe video thank you